this is what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I think to answer your question, why are men going to Asian women? It's not because Asian women are more beautiful. It's not because of the hair. Um, it's because Asian women have been branded as being more feminine, more submissive, more cooperative. Conversely, black women have been branded as the opposite. Mm -hmm. wow. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode one of the Traveling Podcast. Um, my name is Alan. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, we are being hosted today by the Honey Hair Brand. And uh, we have three uh, lovely young ladies that are going to join us in our conversation about hair, black women's relationship with their hair. We're going to talk about beauty. We're going to talk about colorism, the whole nine. Um, we're going to go this way, and I'm going to have you all introduce yourselves. My name is Ty. I am 23 years old, and I am in the film and production industry. Hey, everybody. I am Courtney. I am a self-published author. I discuss the importance of self-love, um, and I do a lot for a living. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My name is Tiny Renee. I'm a content creator, and I love having transparent and real conversations. I, I think I think the fact that we're in Atlanta is so perfect, like as far as speaking to that, because I would say Atlanta, especially for black women, is one of the most competitive, mm -hmm. like cities. Mm -hmm. So and I just moved here. So okay. So so so, now, so, so talk about what it, what what it's been like for you since moving. I don't know. Here. I haven't experienced. For me, okay, so the thing is, I haven't experienced competition, if that makes sense, because of what platform I am on. I haven't met a lot of authors, so I write books. Like, I'm not in a field where other people, like, I, I've heard that, though. I've heard it's competition. Like, some of the hairstylists out here, they in competition with the next, and I'm just like, damn, I want to get my hair done by both of them. I just want my hair done. Like, it don't matter who's better. It's, it matters who provide the better services. And whose personality is better, who doesn't always have an attitude, or how's your energy, what's your mental health like? You know, that's when it gets deeper as a person, or just the reviews, back to what I said, of who the person is. But as my ex my experience, I haven't been here that long, so I haven't really interact with a lot of people, as you may think. But it's still fresh. It's still fresh. It's still new. I'm, but I'm, I'm always, like, true to me and in my own lane. Like, I ain't... Mm -hmm. Worried about what the next person is doing or worried about what that girl is doing. Like, I'm focused on building me up from mm. my younger self. Like, I don't know. That's probably why I never had somebody that I look up to or want to be like. So yeah. I'm just trying to look at me in the mirror and then look at me in the mirror again. Like, damn, you just accomplished all this. That's yeah. <laughs> don't lose sight of that, sis. I'm telling you. People come out here and they lose themselves. Talk about it. Seriously. Um... So I've been here longer than you guys, so I feel like I've seen all the different types of things. Um, when I first came out here, I was definitely in the party scene. So you would see like what the nightlife is like. And I'm more of a person where, kind of speaking to the competition, if I see you look cute, hey girl, you look yeah, cute. Like I'm gonna compliment hurts. you, I want you to feel good. And some women nose up in the air, like, you know, you just don't get that same type of love reciprocated. Um, like I was saying earlier, it's like when I first moved here, I went to Lenox Mall. Mm -hmm. And I'm used to going back home, going to the mall with leggings on, slides, put my hair up in the bun. And I came out here and women have like designer bags, Ooh, heels, okay. stuff like that so in the mall. You know I'm what I'm like, saying? Yeah, I'm and so it's like, OK, like, so, right. So you learn real quick. Like for me, I, okay, I mean, I would still get dressed up, but I didn't wear makeup all the time. But I will say that since I've moved to Atlanta and being in like this content creation space, being on social media, I do get dressed up more often than not. Yes, it's very different. Like I was saying yeah. earlier, I came here today with like no makeup, my hair not really done. You look beautiful but I, though. Right, yes. thank you. Free. And I was like, I want to challenge society for a moment and just 
really let them know, like, you don't have to do it up every single time. Wow. Like, you are beautiful. Like, when I thought about it, I was like, okay, I got to get my hair done. I got to get my makeup done. And I got to buy an outfit just to be here and talk on camera. No, you don't. And I had to sit back for a minute and think, like, you don't got to do all that time. Period. Right. Like, you are still beautiful. Like, I feel most comfortable like this. Like, Absolutely. I want to. That's how, girl. My hair in the bun, I feel good right now. Mm-hmm. But don't get me wrong. <laughs> when I got on a full face of makeup and my, I got my bust down, my long hair, I feel even better. But I wish that society would treat this Our everyday. like it's more than. Because you are still beautiful. Mm-hmm. So why can't I walk in a room like this and get the same feedback as I would walking in the room all did up with my hair and with my makeup. Well, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. It seems to me like y'all do it for other women, not men. Because most men are okay with this if you got the skincare together. But it seems like a lot of women are more so in competition with themselves, like with each other. Mm. I, th- I blame social media for this. I, I agree with that. you. And I think that we are looking at social media as reality when it's not. Um, and that just kind of goes into different things. Like you said, describing the it girl, it's because we that's all we see. And we see that those are the women who get all the likes and they're getting the sponsorships and they're getting paid and things like that. And so I think it's kind of up to us to encourage one another. But I'm going to throw it back at you guys, the men. I to think it's up to us. you guys to encourage women as well to be very vocal about the fact that you don't have to do all of that and praise women who are in their natural state as well. But when you go and you see someone who has a BBL and is half naked and, Ooh. you know, contour face. And praising that. And you're praising that. Every time. Then it sends a very confusing message because I think subconsciously women do want to impress men. Believe it or not, <laughs> a woman has spoken. <laughs> this is what I say. <clears throat> I think, um, and I've said this before, most women only concern themselves with what the top guys want, right? Mm-hmm. And because it seems like the, the girl that the top guy is with has a BBL or she has a full face of makeup or she has all the hair and the, the whole nine, women think that that's what men want. Mm-hmm. Because again, women are only looking at this guy. Right. Even though most guys are here. But what do men want? Mm-hmm. Oh. Skincare. Yeah. Skincare. I love my skincare mm-hmm. routine, baby. You know I can't wait. Scent. Mm-hmm. We want the the way you talk to be feminine. We want the way you move to be feminine. Yes, and, and a I lot think, of women don't realize that. I'm well, and, and, and that's the thing. Like, I think, and me and you were talking about this the other day. I think a lot of women, especially our women, if I'm being honest, are so preoccupied with being the bad bitch mm-hmm. that they're not thinking about being the good woman. Yes. Mm. And it's like, and, and I think what's happening too is women think that the woman that the man wants to sleep with is the one that he wants. Mm-hmm. As mm. opposed to thinking, okay, if I didn't have a vagina to give him, would he still want to be around me? Wow. And am, uh. I, am I flexing, quote unquote, the right muscles? But it's my, me showing my titties, me getting the BBL, is that going to keep him past just a night? This is no. so good. I swear to God, I love this topic. Because <laughs> now it's so no, true. That's one hundred percent right. Because I can only talk for myself. Like I can't talk for nobody else. But me personally, I'm at the stage in life where I'm understanding value and who I am in my deeper self. Learning self love. Like no shades and nothing or nobody, but I've experienced women that's the total opposite of me. Who head isn't on straight. Like on the humble. I've learned new values of growing up to be a woman. Like, what do my man want? What do he need? Now I'm at stages of cooking. I clean the house. I do everything that a woman is supposed to do. But that's, like, mandatory as becoming a woman. Like, okay, so I'm young. I had my teen years. Now I'm developing to be somebody more beautiful than who I once was. So it just depends on what stage that woman is. Mm -hmm. Is that in her life? And understanding her mental, you still have to understand where a woman actually comes from. So you was raised off, your your mama got a BBL. This is how you was raised. Or mm. your mama or whoever raised you, raised you to be this way. That's why it's always be, it always gets deeper to an inner soul, inner core conversation. Because it's like, who are you really? Like deep down, I like those conversations. And get in depth with where you come from. And why are you the way that you are? Or why do you feel comfortable 
like what it like when we talking about what is the normal, what is the real right. normal, or what is the made up. Like I don't want nothing made up. I want natural, uncut, raw, strictly everything. Like don't put a filter on nothing. I'm very but, transparent but it seems with a lot like of things. Even though men are saying that, women are like, nah, I still want I still want the it girl look. But I'm, the I'm thing still... is, okay, so being transparent again, I have two sides because it depends. I don't know. I got I gotta be comfortable with you. I gotta be comfortable with mm. who you is. Like now it depends on what level. It all depends on the levels and like the moment of gratitude in that situation. Then again, <laughs> I think it all boils down to when you're growing up and you're just you're this new person, you're this new creature, and you're developing like what you like, who you are. Your surroundings can dictate that. Yeah. Like how you said, how we were raised. And then again, society can kind of yep, confuse you. So I feel like sometimes women truly don't know who they are. We we need to find ourselves. For a minute, like in my childhood, in my teenage years, I did not know who I was. I was so lost. I was so confused with society, with how my mom carried herself, how my family carried themselves, to the point where I had to sit down and figure out who is Ty? Mm -hmm. Who am I? Without society, without my mom, how she is, how my family is, who am I all alone by myself? And when I found that person, I it's ran It's a beautiful with it. thing. I found myself. Now, that's a conversation all about self. <laughs> we got to find ourselves and we got to shut out society. We got to shut out opinions because those can kind of alter who we are as a person and just be you, be your true self without the eyes of the world on you. Who are you when you're home by yourself and nobody's looking? How do you talk? How do you walk? What do you do? You know? And ultimately, that's kind of my main point. That's what's going to keep a man. Right. I think, I think, you know, and, and me and my boys, we've talked about this. A lot of women are focusing so much on attention that they're not focusing on retention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And especially, like, when wow. we talk about black women, like, black women have no problem getting a man. But the problem seems to be keeping one. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because the time that should be spent developing those things you're talking about is just spent developing an image. Mm, yes. A brand, an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my contour as opposed to my personality. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's not getting through to even young, especially Gen Z, like it's not getting through to them at all. They just trying to be bad and that's it. Mm -hmm. Backfiring because I it was think, famous. I mean, a lot of this ties into who your role models were growing sure. up as well, right? So if we're thinking about Gen Z, who their parents are, I mean, I think their parents who are kind of lost in this matrix of trying to find themselves as well. And when you don't have a your own sense of a compass, your own identity, you can get swayed in different ways. So I think that's a big thing too. But kind of like what we were talking about, they grew up on social media. They don't know what it's like to have part of your life not really on social media and the other part be filled with social media. So they're going just based off of what it's mainstream. Um, in terms of why women aren't listening, though. <laughs> That's something different. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't. I, I really don't know what it is. Um, I think that we are more prone to listen to other women than we are to listen to men. Mm. And maybe that can be tied back to the dynamic that we're used to when we're raised. Right. So if it's not a man present, but your mom was the main person in the household calling the shots like that's primed in your head that you listen to a woman. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But I think we're more receptive to other women than we are to men. I would say women are not listening because and I can't say all women are like this, but I know that most women, they have this idea that all men ain't mm. bleep. You can curse. That's fine. I don't curse, but I like that. all okay. men. Yeah. I'm trying to reach that level. <laughs> <laughs> all men aren't bleep, and I think that's been carried through generation to generation. Like our parents taught us that, because I know my mom always said that about my dad. So I grew up like mm. thinking that until I had to like see for myself, like somebody is out there for me. Like sure, all men ain't the same, yeah. and I think if women kind of like took that away from their idea or their way of thinking, 
then maybe they could find a man that they can actually listen to. Because if I'm walking around thinking like all men ain't nothing, then how am I going to know that person that's for me? Like how am I going to be able to be vulnerable to that person so they can like break it down to me like this should be this? Or like listen to that man so you or want somebody you feel that from. man. Right. So how can we find somebody that we can learn from if we always got this wall up? We always got this piece like I don't trust men or I'm not dating right now. I'm just doing what I want to do type of thing because we haven't really met a good man yet. Mm. Like I know for me, I I haven't met anybody in, in my whole life that's like a good man. Well, so I I want to I want to tie this I want to tie this pun intended I want to <laughs> I want to tie this into the hair, so one of the conversations I was having um, we were talking about submission, and um, I asked her I was like um, why is it that a woman would pick a man that she can't trust or submit to, and she told me that it's not because she doesn't trust him it's because she doesn't trust herself. Like, she doesn't trust that she made the right decision in a man, right? And then we were talking further, and it kind of got to self-esteem. And a lot of women's, to your point, a lot of women's self-esteem has been fractured. And part of what's fractured the self-esteem, when we're talking about a white supremacist framework, when we're talking about uh, colorism, also texturism, Mm -hmm. not having that good hair, Mm -hmm. right? Um, How do you think things like that, Texturism, featurism, colorism has affected a woman's ability to love herself, trust herself, and subsequently love and trust a man and identify a good man. I think it goes back to what society says. Like, there's a certain type of hair that all women want. Not all women. Some women won't. Like, I know with my hair, I wish I had hair that came out my scalp that was already, like, straight and pretty. But I have to straighten my hair every three days just so it could be straight and pretty. So, yeah. Why is straight pretty? Because Why not I, curly pretty? I just like it. That, too, though. I wish I had pretty curly hair, but I also wish I had... I don't know how I want my hair. I just wish it could do what I want it to do when I want it to do it. But that's why we have to wear wigs and weave because our hair, as black women anyway, mm. me specifically, my hair can't curl up like this if I want it to, or it won't be as soft and straight and silky as I want it to. I got to do all these crazy things to it. Get to a do perm, that. then it come Get out. Get a perm, and then it's like... I don't think men truly understand what we go through with our hair. Like, all y'all got to do is go get a haircut, a little shape up, and y'all good to go. But us, like, if you want to take me out, I'm going to have to get my hair done first because it's like, oh, I'm going like this. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, this is how I, I'm just how I wear my hair. <laughs> that is beautiful. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I just feel like sometimes men don't really get it. I can hear your brain working. Talk to me. I'm trying to connect to to what you asked, and yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's just um, a lot of subconscious messaging that we get. So I started getting relaxers when I was like four mm-hmm. or five, little just for me perms, because my mom would always complain about how difficult it was to do my hair, right? And so then it's like you already get this message that, okay, me being in my natural state is a problem. And also I was tenderheaded. So it was like, okay, when I'm in my natural state, now it's painful to me. So you start making those connections on why you being who you are naturally isn't good. Um, So that definitely plays a role. In terms of how that corresponds to the men, though, I don't know. I'm not sure I've ever thought of it being a link between the two. Mm. I never thought about it either. I don't. And maybe, I mean, do you have a, I think, a theory? <clears throat> I think it's kind of like what y'all said earlier. Um, the idea is that some of this pressure is coming from us, as mm-hmm. opposed to the childhood stuff that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And it's easier to say, oh, you know, if men were better, I wouldn't have to go through all this bullshit. But what makes a perfect man? Oh, well, y'all got to answer that. Mm-hmm. I can talk about what I think a good man is, but y'all are the consumers of us. What's a good man? What's a good What's a good woman? Can we start there first? So, I mean, okay, so what, what would us, what would, if we, once we get ready to settle, what would us women want in a man? Somebody that's able to be soft, not always so hardcore, and I don't want somebody that's like too demanding. 
That's not. I want you to put your big boy drawers on. Know that you taking on a lot of pressure, but don't be like insecure. And that plays a whole different part in the ball game. But I don't know. That's why there's no perfect person. There's no perfect man. You just find the person that's for you or that fits you and that matches your energy and your sanity or that likes to do the things that you like to do or that actually understand who you are as a person. I just, you will want somebody that connects connects with you, somebody you can learn from. And not even that, like somebody you can grow with and somebody that deeps down understand you as a person. The reason I brought it, brought it up initially, because you said, I haven't met a good man yet. Mm. Wow, and I then, feel that too. <laughs> I've heard it a lot, actually. And then the other piece, too, was... Yes, I um, did. The... <laughs> we're going to get to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, yes, sure I did. Yes, I did. Okay. We're going to get to it. And then the other piece, too, is um, kind of like a lot of women say, um, men want a woman with BBLs. Men want a woman with Remy or whatever the case may be. So... My pushback has always been, number one, I don't think a lot of our women know how to identify a good man. Mm -hmm. So if one was literally right in front of you, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't even see him, right? Mm -hmm. But the second piece, too, is a lot of the stuff that we're being penalized for, especially as black men, for imposing on you guys is actually being self-imposed. Wow. A lot of the pressures to the big booty and things like that. Like I was telling, um, I was telling you the other day. Men across the world, white men, black men, currently are running overseas to find wives. Wow. And they're primarily going to Asian countries. Do Asian women have a fat ass? They flat. No, no but they have fine hair. <sighs> Asian women are good women. I, I don't, say that. I don't, How do you know they're good women? They just... I'm saying that because... I, I agree with you. Like, yes, a lot of it is self-imposed, but I've also talked to men who are like, I mean, we can go into colorism where some men are like, I want to be with someone who is light complected or of another race because I want my children to Look have like this, this skin tone, have this hair type. And so it's, it is being ingrained in both of us. I don't think it's just one-sided. Um, and we're just kind of bouncing that negative self-image off of one another. This is what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I think, to answer your question, why are men going to Asian women? It's not because Asian women are more beautiful. It's not because of the hair. Um, it's because Asian women have been branded as being more feminine, more submissive, more cooperative. Conversely, black women have been branded as the opposite. Wow. And it's it's hard, especially nowadays, it's hard to make the line between are black men not pairing with black women because they don't like your hair or because they don't like your attitude? Because mm -hmm. some men might not even be able to articulate the fact that I have associated a certain skin color with a certain behavior. Mm. And it's easy, I think, instead of women engaging in that part, it's easier to say, oh, he's a colorist. Oh, he don't like me because of my hair. And keep it pushing. Even though like when I'm talking to guys, Yes, I think texturism is absolutely a thing. Colorism is absolutely a thing. But some women are beautiful. They foresee beautiful, dark skin, beautiful in the whole nine. And I think men grade your ability to take care of what you have more highly than simply what you have. Like using what you got, basically. Yeah, so like, like she can own yeah. her own. She can own herself. Own. What she right. got. Like it's some girls with, let's say, four C hair based on the good hair grade is at the bottom of the barrel. It's some girls I've seen with four C hair. That, damn. But she know how to take care of what she got mm -hmm. versus trying to be something that she's not. Right. Right. Like instead of like, if I don't like my hair, instead of putting weave in, I'm gonna own it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And learn, learn. I think, I think the other thing too is, and this is, you know consequence of white supremacy we have forgotten how to take care of ourselves because yeah. we're trying so hard to be somebody else mm -hmm. i don't know how to take care of my 4c hair because i wish it was 4a right. or 4b or 3b i don't know the numbers out of it right. you know what i mean and i've been saying part of this femininity journey that i would see i would like to see our women go on more specifically is learning how to be the best black woman as opposed to simply trying to compete. Because when you're in competition mode, mm -hmm. you're in masculine mode. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. 
Talk to me. Why are you looking at me? I, <laughs> no, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I agree with what he's saying. Me too. Um, it is sad that we invest hundreds upon hundreds of dollars to cover our hair in the name of it being a protective style. Mm. When a lot of people don't trim their hair, you're not deep conditioning it. So mm. it's like, are you actually protecting your hair or are you protecting yourself from the insecurities that you have about how you look? Because we are forced to adhere to these Eurocentric beauty standards. And so I think that's a big thing too. Like we'll say again, protective styles. But one of the things I was talking to one of my guy friends about is that he was frustrated at the fact that the protective styles never come off. He was like, okay, protection for how long? Like, what is it? When are we going to see what you're protecting? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I think we become so confident, so comfortable with hiding that part of ourselves. We're like you said, if our hair isn't done, we don't want to leave the house. We feel very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting because for me, I'm going on my own little hair journey and I really want to have an afro. That's what I'm working out with my natural hair and how to shape it and stuff. But it's so funny because this was a whole conversation with my friends. And I'm in a group chat and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to do this. And I thought about it and I'm like, do other races of people have conversations about, I'm going to wear my natural hair today. And this is a big thing for me. Like, I have to even talk to my friends about this because this is so new for me. This is different territory. And so when I started to look at things like that, I think I realized how deep rooted it is.